Hello, welcome to LED Toys. We're going to continue building the fantastically magical Lego Harry Potter Diagon Alley. There are a squillion tea pieces in this. It costs a squillion tea dollars and there are four magical modular to build. Hold on, magical modulars. I almost got that out without getting it wrong. We've already built the first two, so make sure you check them out in, in those other videos. Also have all the details about the set, but let's start building the one that is probably the most anticipated out of the four magical modulars. Weasley's Wizard Weezers. I practiced that, I still got it wrong. Weasley's Wizard Weezers. So let's have a look inside the instruction book. We've got a little bit of a description about Weasley's Wizard Weezers and Nocturne Alley here inside the front front page very intriguing indeed and we need we need bags 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 so we've got everything on the table that we need for this build we've got a massive sheet of stickers oh my gosh that's the most stickers I think I've ever seen on a sheet maybe not but that's a lot of stickers uh, we've got a nice big gray base plate we have got bags 15 16 17 18 19 20 like I mentioned before and we have two bags of each there is a lot of orange in 18 not surprising because there's a lot of orange in Weasley's Wizard Squeezes. So let's have a look inside. Oh, actually, before we get into the first bag, we've got, I'm just, I'm putting Harry and Hagrid here because, because they actually came in the 21 box, which is like bag 21, Silencio. Now this doesn't give away everything that was in this little box, but they're actually important for this particular part of the build because this is where Hagrid actually finds Harry in Nocturne Alley. Okay, so who have we got for, oh, okay. So we have a Slytherin robe, which means, and cute little kid legs, which which means obviously we've got a, uh, we've got Malfoy. This is Draco Malfoy. Let's put his true face forward where he's always angry. Is he always angry though? I don't know that he is always angry. Maybe he is. Maybe he's always in angry inside and he needs to take something for that. So we've got Malfoy and well, he's going to be, is he going to be hanging out in Diagon Alley? Is that why he's in this particular part of the set. Hmm, okay, so we've started on our massive grey base plate, just like we did with the last two modulars, and we've got a whole heap of these smooth dark tan tiles, which I'm putting in the right place now, lining the front of it. Actually, they're coming right up to the edge. There's only a bit of cobblestoning happening on the on the little perimeters of this. So that's pretty cool. That's different to how we started the other two builds. So this building, I'm gonna guess, is gonna extend pretty close to the street line. Hmm, okay, so we're getting lots and lots of good foundation down here at the moment. Looks like these are going to be doorways with the smooth gray pieces. And we're building up some wall. There's a lot of this wall building's not the most interesting of building. Actually, no, that's not true because there is a lot of texture and interesting shape and style and color differentiation going into this particular wall over here in the alleyway. But now we've got a big orange door, which is obviously intended for the Weasley's Wizard Weasers entrance. See, I'm going to say that. But it's gonna, it's gonna get old really quickly though as I try and practice not saying it poorly. And I don't know that I'll ever be able to say it not poorly. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so we've smoothed around the sides of the door which makes it look extra smink. I mean, this is one of the newer buildings, right? In, in Diagon Alley because actually I don't know how, how do buildings happen in Diagon Alley? Do they just evolve when new shopkeepers wanna take them over or do the shopkeepers take over existing Hmm, existing places. I don't know. Okay, we have built Nocturne Alley and it's obviously a skew here and that's basically the entire nod we're going to get to Nocturne Alley. It's just there's a little alley between the buildings, which is what an alley is, I suppose. But we don't get any of the more sinister buildings. Maybe we'll get them in future releases. That would be really, really cool. And now we have another bright orange door built in the opposite, like in the mirror image of the previous one and this one with all of its nice smooth siding around the door is going to be sitting out on the front or the front walkway this is the primo door actually there are so why are there two entries into weasley's wizard wheezes that is that like and one of them comes in from nocturne alley that kind of seems a bit sinister to me hmm, maybe there's some underhand dealings going on with the weasley brothers 
no, there aren't. That, that's, that's a blasphemous thing to say. That t entirely is not true. Okay, so we are building something nice and smoothed over with some pea greens in the middle, which you can't see once it's actually built and put in place. Some more smooth archway thing. Oh, it's a pedestal-y. It's, oh, it's a window display. Oh, that's fancy. And now we have got some striping on a brown column. Some, are we turning this in? Oh, okay, okay, I know what this is. I know what this is, I'm a bit slow sometimes, but I figure it out eventually. These are the legs for the giant Weasley, <laughs> the giant Weasley showpiece for the entire thing. And it's going to be, so they're going to be in the display window, these big long stick legs. It's gonna be like a spidery kind of image at that, at that height. Okay, so let's see what we have got now. I, I don't know. We'll find out as we... Oh, okay, so this holds... Oh, this holds the windows on on those cool angles that they're sitting at. And this is the end of these bags, so not too many spare pieces. We're up to bag number 16. And now we get another minifigure. Um, mm, another Malfoy minifigure. So this is Daddy Malfoy. This is Lucius Malfoy. This is a great outfit. Let's... He's only got one face, though. <laughs> so nobody can call him two-faced. But he's definitely actually no he's not two-faced he's very very outwardly evil so that's fine he <laughs> i don't like two-faced people if you're going to be evil just make sure everybody knows that you're evil so let's put the malfoy family over here they can sneer at the the building of the weasleys wizard wheezies and they can laugh at me when i get things wrong but ha, oh, i don't care i am stronger than that <laughs> <laughs> right okay more is this are we building more wall we are there's a lot of orange going in now as you'll see but oh did you also we've got purple purple and orange which clash so horrendously but they just look so beautiful <laughs> this, this building is insane in its colors it's like a big bright bludgeon to the eye and we've got purple bricks now like purple brick bricks is that helpful that's not very helpful so with the with the brick indentation actually in the bricks that is so awesome and the purple and the gray and the orange is just there's so much going on here and we've got the first of it looks like graffiti but i think it's an advertisement for the edible dark marks that the weasleys sell which don't make anyone sick and i was going to say that they're sweets but if they make you sick are they sweets that's kind of contradictory we're now working on the inside and it looks like we're putting some tables or some display areas happening in here Got some sand green columns and uh, there are going to be so many things filling out the inside of this shop. I'm not even going to know what they are. These green cubes, I last saw them as slime cubes in Minecraft. Have they ever come unprinted? They probably have. I just haven't noticed. So now we've got something. I don't know what this is. It could be anything. It's, it could be... It's probably not edible ears because you'd probably see them displayed on the front. What do you think these things are? You have to tell me in the comments. You probably know. I mean, I'm sure you would know better than I do because I don't really no i'm not i'm not a massive potter head I, as i've said before i i love harry potter i've read the books i've seen the movies but i just don't know all of the details i i, I forget things so quickly <laughs> mind of a gnat okay so we have a brown curved piece which is going to go on the top here which is going to be extra support for the next level and now we get some more details to go into the actual shop Look at those bright lurid colours with the green, the lime green and the yellow sitting down there on the base. It's not definitely not a modest restrained bookcase like we saw in Ollivanders or, or in Flourish and Blots. So here we have got some random products which you're going to have to tell me what they are because I don't know. They could be anything. I mean, sparkly and dangerous basically. That's, that's, what I, that's how I feel about the entire store. Got some yellow squares going on with purple lids. So we got yellow jars yep and they're stacking onto the shelf and now we get another layer on the shelf and up here what else are we getting up here some orange and purple oh, gosh i'm so excited i wish i knew what these were because they just look so they look so tempting so we got three of those somebody's somebody's actually bought the top one and some pink sparkly jars maybe full of no, sprite dust or something and these go on the side to smooth it over oh my gosh that is just the <laughs> such a horrendous garish amount of color all going in there in one fantastic bookcase now we get some labeling on this so i know what this is it's a dancing doxy 
So the Doxy is a wind-up toy, which is dry, designed to drive your cat crazy. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that is so cute. We got some more random little boxes to be stacked on the top of the Dancing Doxy one. And this little stack of boxes is just installed over here in the corner. What if you want the bottom box, though? Everything's going to fall off. But that's the joy, isn't it? You could just get to search through and find cool stuff. Now, what goes on here? Oh, this is a cash register. A cash register. This is the cash register. Or the checkout. That was, I think cash register is a more appropriate term for it here. And it's striped yellow and yellow and black like a bumblebee. There we go. So there's the checkout point. Got our door going in here. Got quite a lot going on already. Now, now we get some more signage. Ah, up. We get stairs. And I'm going to move this up just up a bit so that we can actually see it past those bottom few bricks. And these ones all here have got that fantastic labeling up the stairs to entice you to come up to this next level of Weasley's Wizard Weezers and see what else you can be conned into buying <laughs> and what sort of tricks you can play on your friends. Are they really your friends if you're going to be playing tricks on them though? They'd have to have a good sense of humor. More magical mayhem up, 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 up. There we go. So we're going up those stairs. That is so cool. It's just like it's in the movie. No, it's just like it is in the movie. And now we get a landing for the stairs. Yeah, the landing and the stairs are going around the corner. So the, the next level is going to be sitting back a bit. This is a, a cool way to keep the staircase out of the way. As you noticed on the other ones, they, the staircases swing in or swing up so that they can be put away. Whereas this staircase is neatly integrated into the actual build of the, of the bottom level. And this is the, ah, the end of this bag. And this piece here, this black 2x4 is quite substantial. It belongs here. <laughs> so I missed that out. Have to go back through the instructions, find out where I missed it from. There we go. All right, now we're up to bag number 17. We are motoring magically through this. And now we get another minifigure. Oh my gosh, it's one of the Weasley brothers. But which one? Which Weasley brother? So which one has got the green vest? Oh my gosh, I love their faces. <laughs> so George for green, according to the box, George is the one with the green vest. And it's going to be Fred with the orange vest and he'll come in another bag. So it's nice to have one of the owners now of the shops, of the shop, hanging out in here. We get a lantern so that we can actually see. And this gets suspended in the middle of the room from that bar that we, that, that overhanging, well, that beam across the middle. I'm trying to get it to hang straight. That's kind of straight. <laughs> and now we get to head up on to the next level. We're putting a whole world of flooring in. Oh, this is exciting. I can't wait to see what the setup's like on the second floor. We've got some more windows. Are these for the next level, though? So these windows, we see this, this style quite a bit with this particular, with, in this build. So we're seeing a whole heap of bay display windows, which is really awesome because it's one of my favorite type of windows. One's windows that you can actually sit in. Though these ones are just the design more for display than sitting in but you know just <laughs> shoot all of that all of that display out and then you can sit in the windows and make the most beautiful window seat <laughs> oh, i love window seats so much and focusing again now we have got a whole heap of rounded over pieces to put a whole world of stickers on and these have to line up so we've got weasley whiz zard we were eases Weasels, Weasley, Weasley, Weasels, Weasley, 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 and on this one we got Weasley, oh gosh, Weasley, Weas, Weas, Sad Weasels. Okay, and these go up here. Oh man, I have not lined these up super duper well. They're not terrible though, I think I, I think I can definitely live with them. More rounding over contouring going on above the windows and more walling going up. Walls and windows. There's a lot of wall in this. It's actually a lot taller than the other two. Oh, no, no, it's a lot taller than the other two windows. No, the other two buildings that we've actually done. I got distracted by this sticker, which is, is it just a Weasley emblem or is it one of their, is it one of their actual uh, products? Is it like a, a punching bonanza? I don't know what that is. You can tell me in the comments. You guys know. You guys know all this stuff. Now, I... Don't know what this is. This is, is this part of our, our big mannequin figurey thing? It's not. Oh, it's, it's the, it's the signage out the front, out the front of the shop. And we are putting more walls on and more windows, which I have pre-built because you've already seen me build these sorts of windows so many times. Three up 
and and a jumper stud on the top this bit here is going to hold it all in place nicely as long as i've built it correctly and <laughs> if it doesn't hold it all nicely in place then i haven't built it correctly got some more stickers going on we've got always whiz guaranteed oh that's not overly straight always whiz guaranteed I don't know that that's very nicely lined up. I might go back and see if I can fix that later, but I've already had two goes at it and it didn't go so well. So maybe when I have a bit more patience. Now I've got a lantern on the side and I have missed out some pieces. And now we're up to bag number 18. Lots of orange. So much orange. It's like we haven't already seen a lot of orange. There's a lot more still to come, but we do get to meet Fred. Fred in the orange. Speaking of orange, so his waistcoat is orange. It's an orangey brown. He gets two different faces to his brother, but otherwise they are identical in hair and pants <laughs> and in their top, except for their waistcoat colors. Okay. Up on the second level, we've got some interesting things happening here in this corner, but we don't really get to look at that at the moment because we've got more windows to build. This whole place is just windows. There's a lot of <laughs> windows in this build, which is nice. They let in light. I love windows, but there are a lot of them in here and they're all bright, lurid orange. Is orange anybody's favorite color? What, what color does orange match with nicely? I, I ask, I'm asking for a friend because I don't know that I particularly love orange, but maybe I could learn to love it if it was matched with something that it really suited. <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Okay, we've got some more interesting things going here inside stock, inside the wizard, Weasley wizard, wizards. Weasley, weasley, weasley. We've got them pink jars, we've got some green jars, we've got little white pointy things down there which look really, really dangerous. And we've got some technique pieces here. This has got, has this got anything to do with this, this display? It does. We put it, oh my gosh. Okay, so we're using a black lipstick here as a hinge point for what I think is going to be the arm for our, our figurine. Oh, look at that. Oh, hold on. I put it around the wrong way. It needs to go oh, that way. There we go. And that goes on top of our display. So this display is going to be on the inside and the arm you're going to be able to see from the outside. So this is going to go in that little rounded corner that we were working up in on the second level. But don't worry if you missed that. We'll be going back up there in a minute anyway and we'll be able to see all of what's going on. And on this side, so this side's going to be the outside and this is the waistcoat and some more stripes, the stripey suit, except I've got the wrong length one. That one's the right length one for this side and this side. And there's just this random arm sticking out one side. <laughs> they said side too many times. Side, side, side. Here's another arm, but this one's got a bend in it. This one's a bendy arm with a hinge. We call those hinges elbows in people. And this guys, look at that. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. All right, so I'm going to assume that we get windows now. Hello, windows. <laughs> Hello, old friends. Let's see, these are going to be going, oh, okay, not there. That was not what I expected at all. We're going to need some rounded bay windows around this figure, right? So is that what we're doing now? This is some more of the molding around the actual windows. Some more stickers, the best. <laughs> the best in jinxing. The best in jinx, have I done that right? I don't know what's going on here. Yes, yes, I was so worried. The best in jinxing and up here we get these windows. Here we go. So we put the arm through these windows that don't have glass in them. These ones, some of them have glass in, but the top one does not. So it's sticking up in the air. And now we've got, look at that, he's trapped inside. These windows are awesome, but you can't really see into them once they're built, which is a bit of a shame, but it's the style. It's, it's how it's supposed to look. This here is going to hold all those windows on on the top. I know that because we've built very similar things before. And now we've got some more stickers to line up masterpieces of, dun dun dun, masterpieces of modern magic masterpieces. And this, we're gonna build all of these things down here and then install them. And then we've got this one, disastrous delights and what's this one we're we gonna have more stickers oh be pleased when the stickers are done what's this one this one is petrifying products which is probably i mean petrifying means scary but also you couldn't quite literally probably petrify people with the products with some of the products that are in here so masterpieces of modern magic going around the top here always we's guaranteed not particularly straight still and petrifying products up here. I tried to fix up that always wheeze guarantee and I still did not get it right. This is looking superb. Look at this. 
We've got a lot to fit out here on the inside, but see our display case in the corner there with the little man in the window on the other side. We're up to bags number 19. Do we get any more minifigures? I don't think we do. So now we've got a whole heap of wall to build, but this wall is very gray in color. So I am assuming that this has nothing to do with the Weasley's shop, but we are extending Diagon Alley, which I thought we kind of had finished with Diagon Alley. We haven't, we've got this askew space in the wall and we get an askew window to kind of just, is that just gonna be flopping in the breeze like that? No, no, okay, so it holds against that little sticky out stud thing there. Ah, oh, look at that, that's cool. So that's just to head up to the same level as the second level of the wizardly wheezes, because I suppose the alley would look pretty silly if it was just sitting down there without more stuff on the top. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. We've got lollipops! And they're not going to be just normal lollipops, so watch out for them. But let's put them in the corner. They're all falling out. Oh, this is so exciting because we're starting to stock the store. So what have we got here now? Probably something I don't... Oh no, this is this is Fred Weasley's basic blaze box. Why is there so much alliteration in here? I have to pronunciate things, pronounce things properly. Because otherwise I'm really struggling. I'm really struggling anyway. But we've got a whole heap of these. Look, we've got to run on basic blaze boxes this month. So these are installed here in front of our beautiful purple wall. Nice big display of Fred Weasley's basic blaze box. And along the front, we get a cornucopia of colours. Look at that. I just did alliteration. <laughs> a cornucopia of colours to make a railing along the front. That is frightening. But now we get some more shelving with some random stuff on the inside, but obviously magical random stuff. So it's not just random random stuff. It's magical random stuff, which means it belongs here. This box has got a picture of... Uh, okay, I feel as though that's something I should know what it is, but I don't know what it is. So this makes a lovely display here, also attached to the railing. And now, now we get some more support going in, I think. This looks like a nice big long beam to go across the middle. And then we can put some more flooring on, because this, this building goes up to a third level. A third level, the little attic in the top. <laughs> Which will also be stocked with petrifying products. Okay, what have we got now? We got some more stairs. Obviously, we're going to need stairs. We've got a double stair now to get all the way up to... Our, where are these going to go? We've got some very colourful... Our cornucopia of colourful... Colourful... Colourful railing going on here. It goes from there to there. I did not see that coming. All right. Now we are working up here in the third level. Getting a whole heap of walling in because obviously we need structure before we can put all the internal works in. This is interesting. So we're holding these in on an angle. That's the way you can hold in on an angle without needing any stud. There are no studs holding that in on the bottom. They're just held in by those little arms. Now they're secured in place by the great arch pieces. This is really cool. This is such, there's so many fun, interesting building techniques in this particular building to make it just as wacky as it is. Here we got those weird balloon things. I don't know what they are. They're balloon. I mean, they look like balloons and they hang off the side here. And now, now we get some more colorful railing, a colorful cornucopia. <laughs> it's like I've learned a new word of the day, cornucopia. Okay, we're at the end of this bag. It is looking absolutely magically magnificent and we don't have any strange random pieces left over. So now we can move on to bag 20. We get a jinx off advertisement on the side of the building and we've got a fancy scroll work brown table here with a bright green top so you won't miss it as you come up the stairs. More fabulous petrifying product. Got one of those, oh, one of those cool rock cave pieces. I still haven't got a green one of these, I don't think, or a blue one. There's one of them. I got a few pink ones now because they've come in different sets. But there's one that's a bit more exclusive. It's either the green one or the blue one, but I can't remember which one. A stack of random boxes over here. So this is going to be a really reasonably low roofed, I think, this area because it's it's the attic -y overhang spot. And we have to build some interesting shelving to go up in there. So some more of these little angled product pieces. I keep saying product too, because it's just because I have no idea what they could possibly be. I don't want to give them random names because I'd just be making it up. <laughs> and there probably are real names for them. So what do we got on this shelving? So this goes up here in this little spot that we have designed. No, hold on. All needs to go forwards one more stud. Then we got some little blue men. 
and it all gets held together with that with the shelf on the top and this is oh some more railing we get some more colorful railing no this is just the smoothing over for this railing but we do get more colorful railing now we need to put this across here too And there we go. Can we actually seriously think about fitting anything more in this top level? I don't know that we can. So which means we've now got a whole world of roofing to do and we need to find out how we're going, well, how Lego is going to achieve the top hat tipping thing that happens at the top of that little figure on the side. Okay, I'm excited. I'm always excited, but now I'm even more excited. <laughs> I get very exhausted. Excite being excited is exhausting. It's very wearing. Sorry, wearing. I'm tired. I think I need to have a nap. No, I don't because we need to finish this build and it's way too exciting to nap. Okay, we are working in this little corner here where we're going to be putting this figure and obviously a moving mechanism. These little arms are very, yeah, they're very fragile. I keep knocking them off. Okay, this is the head. This is the head of the figure. This is going to have a little tiny skinny face. Here are its ears, so we can see we can see how this is. Can you see how this is coming together? Can already see it. So at the moment we need our nose. There we go. There's a wizard, a wizard, a wizardly wheezy face. It's a wheezy face just sticking up here on the top. And now we just oh dang! I was really hoping that we were going to find out how we we're going to make the top hat, but it looks like that's going to come soon. We've got a whole heap of technique pieces to go in to make the moving ah the moving component. Okay. So let's install this. This goes up here behind. And when you move, ah, oh, those have fallen out again. That's okay. I fixed it. When you move it, that doesn't move at all. So I might have, might have done something a bit wrong here. I need to, if I just move this in onto a different angle, there we go. Well, that works better. Okay. Let's hope that that's it. I'm pretty sure that that's it. We'll find out whether it works as it's supposed to as we go on. All right, these are holding all of the things in places. So we've got a whole heap of structural build going in at the moment. A black roof, a black flat piece of roofing on how we're going to fill. Aha! So this is how we're going to fill that gap, like the big gap in the roofing. So we need a hinged angle thing, which is this, this black bit. And this just, according to the instructions, just kind of sits there. No, no, it slides in and yeah, it hooks into that little technique bit, that pin on the other side. Oh, that's really secure. Oh, check that out. That is really cool. <laughs> okay, now we get our top hat, which is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> it might be, it might be a bit, a bit underwhelming. Maybe not. Let's hope it's not underwhelming. We've got another stripe on here because that's the top part of the arm holding the hat. And this gets put, held together with a technique pin here at the hinge. Also known as an elbow in real people. Look at that. So we don't, oh, hold on. You don't want to kick it too hard. So we need to angle it like that. Look at that. The top hat. He's tipping his top hat. That's really very cute. And it's very simple and effective. <laughs> Okay, now, now we get to the most important part of the build, the love potions, because that's what we're all really here for, aren't we? Because if you can't make somebody fall in love with you with a potion, what are you really actually doing with your life? Or you could, you know, let them get to know the real you and build up a strong friendship, or you could just give them a love potion. A bit quicker, really. So here's our stand of love potions. I love the fact that they are all sitting at different angles and ah, this is the end. Oh, got another blue guy, but this is the end of this bag. And we have a piece that should be on the build and I suspect it belongs to the head here. I think it's nice smoothed over hair. There we go. His nose is on straight. His hat is tipping beautifully. <laughs> and now his hair is a bit more smooth and not so study or studly. <laughs> oh, that is adorable. Oh my gosh. Okay, this was quite... Oh, well, this was quite a complex build. This is the most technical of the three buildings that I've built so far. There is a lot going on on the inside. There are a lot of products in here and I have no idea what half of them are, but I'm sure they're all fabulously dangerous and not the sort of thing that I would like to have tried out on me. Okay. All right. This is, look at this little spot in here for the technique technique workings for the tip hat, the top hat, the top hat that tips on the outside. This is spectacular and it has been the most technical 
build of the three builds that we've done so far and it is obviously designed to hook in with the other buildings and I can't fit them all on my table I can only have two of them in on display at a time on this particular space these ones aren't designed to go back to back the next one that we build is going to be able to sit back to back which is quality Quidditch supplies so that's all we've got left to go and then we're gonna set this up and see how it looks in its more than one meter long magical splendidness oh but I'm a bit sad that we're coming to them but we do I'm, I'm happy because there's still one more fantastic modular to build so make sure you check back in make sure you subscribe leave me a comment let me know all the stuff that you're thinking while you're watching the video and I'll be back with another one very soon so I'll see you then bye